Hello students and welcome to unit four. Congratulations on making it this far. In this unit, we're going to really test your algebraic skills. So if those aren't up to snuff, you're going to find this very difficult. Don't worry about that though. Learn the calculus, practice the algebra on the side and really get through what you need to get through. But you gotta learn these amazing concepts within calculus so that you can pass that AP calculus exam in May. Today, we're gonna be talking about implicit differentiation, which is something you've been doing this entire time. So let's get started. So with implicit differentiation, like what do I mean by that? Well, you know what an explicit function is. So an explicit function, right? Those are things where we're going like y equals. Okay, so when you've got one function y, um, you know that there's only one value of x, but look at that example right over there, right? It has two functions, y equals the positive square root and y equals the negative square root. So those are two things. And you want to also think about functions graphically. So if you got something like that, there is no um, vertical line that can go through two points, but a circle that is not an explicit function because a vertical line is going through more than one point at a certain at a certain value. So you want to think about that. What is implicit and explicit functions? So that circle can be graphed, but only explicitly by stating exactly what it's supposed to mean and what it's supposed to do. So that's how we're going to be com communicating about differentiation here. OK, and um, it's, it's not going to be that bad. You're going to you're going to love it. You're going to love it. I promise. So I want to uh, take a look at a couple couple of examples. And as I've stated before, calculus is really invented at the exact same time by two different people. Um, and so one of those people was using F prime notation. And one of those people was using dy dx, which you've seen a little bit, but, no, but more often we've been using F prime notation, prime notation there. So you're going to realize why this dy dx notation is going to be very useful as we continue to move forward here. For example, we're going to take this uh, function here, uh, y equals square root of 25 minus x squared, and we're going to differentiate with respect to x. OK, so let me rewrite this y equals uh, 25 minus x squared to the one half. OK. And then I'm going to uh, take the derivative with respect to x. And I haven't been showing this, but this is exactly what's happening. OK, so we take the derivative of y with respect to x. OK, and then we go one half 25 minus x squared uh, to the negative one half. And then we got to take the derivative of the inside. So it's going to be multiplied by negative 2x. And this is the thing I haven't written before. And I haven't written dx dx, okay? And I write it off to the side there just so you're, you're not getting crazy confused here. But dx dx, like what does that mean? Where are we getting that from? Well, it doesn't really mean anything, okay? Because if you look at it kind of like a fraction, it comes out to be one. So that's why I've never been writing it. All right, but we've been writing it uh, on the left side here when we write dy dx, okay, with respect to x. So let's simplify this a little bit more. Those twos are going to divide out. We're going to get negative. So dy dx equals, um, let's see, uh, we got negative x in the numerator and then the square root of 25 minus x squared. So that's our explicit function that we've taken the derivative of. And so nothing much has happened there. Um, nothing new at least. But here when we take this function, we're going to be taking it again with respect to x. So uh, in our first part, we're going to get 2x and then with respect to x. So that's going to be dx dx. And again, I haven't been writing it before because it's just one plus 2y. And then, because you just take the derivative like normal, and then we get dy dx. And then on the other side of that equal sign, we get the derivative of 25. Well, that's a constant, so it's going to be equal to 0. Fantastic, OK? But now we need to solve for dy dx. We want to figure out what is that derivative, OK? 
So uh, I'm going to subtract 2x to the other side. So we're going to get 2y times dy dx equals negative 2x. And then look at this. I'm going to divide this by 2y to isolate the dy dx. So divide by 2y, divide by 2y, and I'm going to get dy dx, which is the derivative of y with respect to x, or f prime, equals negative x over y because those twos divide out right so as i'm looking at this as, I, as i'm talking about this stuff we're talking about all right notice how this function although defined implicitly this function is defined this derivative is defined with y in terms of x and y and this is something that it is possible to graph um if you if you just graph a relation on your calculator it's definitely possible to graph um, on, on some calculators. So you can actually see what this looks like and how it's going to affect uh, the graph moving forward. So now I want to kind of continue this idea as we move forward. So we want to, we have this graph of a circle, right? And um, we're going to, let's first find that equation. And uh, if you don't know what the equation is of a circle, it's just x minus x1 squared plus y minus y1 squared equals r squared so r is the radius x1 and y1 are the center of the circle so we've got the center right here it looks like at three negative two with the radius of one two three four five so a radius of five right there okay so um, as i write this i'm going to have x minus three squared plus y plus 2 squared equals r squared which is 5 squared which is 25 all right great fantastic so what i want to do is what i just did on the previous page i want to i want to differentiate this implicitly okay so let's expand it real quick i'm actually let's not even expand it let's use the chain rule all right so i'm going to bring that two down i'm going to get x minus three okay and then um, I subtract one and then I multiply by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of x with respect to x is just one dx dx. So just one. All right. So then plus two y plus two subtract one from the exponent. And then we got to take the derivative of uh, y plus two. So what's the derivative of y? Well, it's one dy dx. So one dy dx and then on the other side the derivative of 25 is zero all right so we want to solve for dy dx i'm going to subtract that 2x minus 3 to the right side so i get 2y plus 2 dy dx equals zero and then wait not equals zero equals negative 2x minus 3 Okay, um, and then I'll divide by the 2y plus 2. So all I'm doing is trying to isolate that dy dx. Divide by 2y plus 2. So those 2s are going to divide out. Um, they divide out on the left side, obviously. And we get dy dx equals negative x minus 3 on y plus 2. Again, totally fine to have that y variable um, in terms of our function here in our explicit function sorry our implicit function so what i want to do with this circle what i want to do here is i want to start um thinking about have you ever spun a yo-yo um and what i want you kind to kind of to think about here is imagine you've got a yo-yo in your hand you're just kind of like spinning it around in a circle so wherever your hand is right that's going to be the center part of our circle right there and um that yo-yo is just going to keep spinning around in that circle as long as we keep up that momentum it's going to just keep spinning at a constant radius uh centered on wherever point we have our hand in so that's kind of what you want to think about the reason why i'm talking about yo-yos here is because imagine this circle and you let that yo-yo go, okay? Say you let that yo-yo go at this point, at 
this point zero two. Okay, depending on the direction you're spinning your yo-yo, whether it's that direction or this direction, what is that yo-yo going to do? Well, it's going to follow a very linear path, of course, acted on gravity and physics and stuff. But um, if, if we were in some sort of vacuum, it would follow a linear path doing one of these. We can see that there is a tangent line and that yo-yo would just go flying off following that linear path. Again, if we're going this way, um, that yo-yo would go down. And if we're going the opposite direction, that yo-yo would go flying up. Okay. So what I want to do is figure out what is the slope of that tangent line. And that's where it comes in very useful that we have a function defined implicitly. All right, so we're gonna find these values and we wanna get dy dx for all of these. So right here in our first one, I've got dy dx equals negative, uh, let's see, we've got, zero minus three on two plus two. All right, let's simplify that. We get negative, negative three over four, which is three, four. So if I want to graph this a little bit better, a little bit more accurately, all I've got to do is start here and I know the slope is three, four. So up three, one, two, three, over four, one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna end up right there. So if I connect those in a line, if I connect those in a line, essentially that would be the slope that we're talking about. All right, so that's the slope at that point. And what I wanna do is I wanna do that for all of these values. So next I've got dy dx, and we're gonna get negative, three minus three over three plus two equals negative zero over five. And that's gonna get me zero, okay? And zero, fantastic, that seems like it's gonna be a horizontal tangent. So let's see this at three, three. So at three, three, it is right there. And that is a perfect horizontal tangent right there. So we know that we let that yo-yo go, it would just go flying off to the side at that height. All right, so now we've got another one, dy dx equals negative, and I've got eight minus three in the numerator, and in my denominator, I've got negative two plus two. Okay, so if I mess with that a little bit, what are we gonna get? We're gonna get negative five over zero, which is undefined. And remember, if it's undefined, we have a vertical tangent line okay so let's see that happening at eight negative two let me scroll up eight negative two right there perfect and we've got a vertical tangent line happening this graph is going to get a lot of little lines little tangent lines that we're going to be doing at all these different points okay we're about halfway through here so let's keep it up dy dx bam dy dx if i can spell properly uh is going to be negative um, three minus three over negative seven plus two. Okay. And let's see, I get negative zero over negative five, which is zero. All right. So another horizontal tangent, let's check that point three, negative seven, three over seven down right there. And yes, that should be a horizontal tangent. Okay. Got a little bit more three remaining here. So dy dx equals um, negative six minus three over two plus two. And let's see, we're gonna get three over four. Is that right, negative three? Yes, so negative three fourths, perfect. Uh, so six over two down. Wait, that doesn't seem right. Six over two up. That's why that didn't seem right. All right, and then my point here is going to be about negative three fourths, so down three. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. And let me connect those two points just so I can get a pretty accurate tangent line. You see how accurate these tangent lines are happening on this graph with our yo-yo. All right, we got two left here in this video. So dy dx equals negative, negative two minus two over 
Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, not negative two minus two. That's ridiculous. Negative two minus three over negative two plus two, which is going to be negative. Uh, what is that? Negative five and then zero. So that's going to be undefined as well. Again, undefined means we have a vertical tangent. So negative two, negative two, perfect right there. And we should have a vertical tangent line. It would just go flying up into space. Uh, but of course, uh, we've got gravity here on Earth, pesky gravity. And then um, we've got one more in this video, dy dx equals negative six minus three on negative six plus two. Okay, so I want to get negative 6 minus 3 is 3, and then negative 4. So that's going to get me positive 3 fourths. And let's see this last one happening at 6, negative 6. 6, negative 6. Oh, that's not it. Let me fix that. Uh, 6 over, 6 down. It's over here on the right. And it's positive 3 fourths. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 right there. And connect those points in that nice line and that is our other tangent line so as we're talking about all these implicit functions do not lose sight of this idea of what is happening why is it useful to understand these because calculus was meant to understand physics it was created to understand more about physics and area of irregular shapes and, and things and we're going to talk about that next semester don't worry but um as you start to get more into physics now you're able to actually utilize the calculus that you've been learning about this entire time like what was the point of all of it well so that you can utilize it in these really nice algebraic physics representations here okay so do not lose sight of what you've been doing it all has a purpose it's not just letters and numbers that's not what calculus is it's actually meant to be applied here so um, if you have any questions about what it means to take derivatives implicitly or if, you, if you're excited to see more examples, we're going to do that in our next video. So stay with it. Again, welcome to Unit 4. It's so exciting to be here because now we actually get to use a lot of the things we've been learning about. So stay with it. If you need any help, I'm Mr. Hernandez and this is Mr. Hernandez Teaches.